Good morning, everyone. Thank you for choosing to spend your value, valuable time with us this morning as we discuss uh, what we need to know about developing relationships with the Department of Defense. We're gonna start with a brief explanation of who we are, uh, review our purpose and agenda today, and then we'll introduce our guests. So Duff Tech is the, it's called the Maryland Defense Technology Commercialization Center. And we are a program of the Maryland Department of Commerce. Uh, we're federally funded through the Economic Development Administration, and we help businesses connect with the resources and uh, facilities and intellectual property at the DOD labs in the state of Maryland. And we do that by uh, going out and meeting businesses, obviously online at the moment, which has been working very, very well, uh, learning about what they're working on, what kind of challenges they're facing, and then we search through a nearly 2000 uh, patent database that we have to see if we can find solutions uh, in that database. Uh, it's also an opportunity for you to look at uh, new technology that's being developed and see if you can't make use of it in another way. So we're gonna move on. Um, in, in Maryland, of course, as I said, we do have this robust DOD ecosystem of support within the state. We've got uh, SBDCs with uh, people have expertise in defense contracting because that's just what we do here. Uh, one of the things we do here, we do lots of other things, but it's really critical to uh, business and to our local, uh, our, our state economy. So we have lots and lots of great tools. Um, there's a Maryland defense network that the state set up, uh, the SBDCs, again, just an awful lot out there. So as, as I mentioned before, the DOD has been just innovating different, different pathways for collaboration with industry and academia. Uh, so that they can meet warfighter needs. And I think, um, you know, with, with my entire adult life being spent with the Department of Defense, I do tend to look at, um, you know, making sure that this is meeting warfighter needs. And with two of my daughters also serving in the Air Force right now, uh, meeting warfighter needs really has uh, deep meaning for me. So as a business and you're looking for solutions, just remember, uh, again, know your customer, that's their focus, right? They wanna solve warfighter needs. Um, so on, on that note, I think our timing could not have possibly been better in securing our next couple of guests. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Secretary Gertz announced six new tech bridge locations across the United States. And I'm very happy to say that two of those six are here in the state of Maryland. So we're going to dive into what, what that means. And we are joined by both Krista Michaelis, who is the capital Tech Bridge Director of Naval X and the Naval Innovative Science and Engineering Program Director at Naval Surface Warfare Center, Carterock. Good morning, Krista. How are you? Good morning, Kim. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. And we're also joined with who you heard from a minute ago, uh, Rick Tarr, who is the Southern Maryland Tech Bridge Director at Naval X. Um, Rick, thank you for being here this morning. Um, and. Uh, I'm going to say very quickly, um, and I'm not, he's, he's not paying me any money for this, but I know that, uh, I, I know Rick, uh, because Rick and I have worked together in one form or another since 2007. Um, I, I've watched him, you know, grow his career to the point where he's running the, the show and tech transfer down there. Um, and he's done a lot of really innovative things. He understands uh, OTAs, EPAs, PIAs, all the acronyms very, very well, PLAs, Kratos, uh, I could go on and on. And he's, um, I, I've watched him push in the right way to innovate and, and use these tools um, appropriately, you know, and, and figure out how to get people to step out of their comfort, comfort zone because it's not just, you know, Rick or Krista sitting in their office making decisions about who does what. They've got these huge legal team, they've got contracting professionals that they work with and um, there's a lot of need to be able to collaborate within your own organization. Um, so thank you both for finding the time to talk to us this morning. And let's just start with, uh, you know, if one of you could tell us what is Naval X and what are tech bridges? Yeah, sure. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, like Kim said, my name is Krista McAllis. I'm the Capital Tech Bridge Director. Um, so Rick and I will tag team answering um, some of these questions this morning. So the 2018 National Defense Strategy was a call to the Department of the Defense um, to find ways, new ways to harness innovations um, in private business and, and academia to better serve and protect our country. 
So um, as a response, uh, the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition, um, Secretary Gertz, established NavalX in February 2019 uh, to, to expand the Department of the Navy capabilities in these areas. So the goal of NavalX is to connect both um, internal Department of the Navy and external Department of the Navy partners to increase awareness and access to best practices and technologies. Um, at the same time, uh, tech bridges were stood up um, to uh, connect the Department of the Navy, to be connectors, right, to create this network, um, to connect the Department of the Navy workforce to uh, the external, local, regional innovation ecosystem. Um, so last year, uh, six tech bridges were stood up across the country. Um, and then last week, Secretary Gertz announced six more. Um, so, um, you know, the main points of the tech bridge um, are to create and maintain these strong regional and national networks um, of innovators and to be a super connector for these innovation activities that are ongoing. Um, and for you all, it allows a single point of entry into the Department of the Navy ecosystem in your region. Um, and then also we're doing all of this. Um, we really want to lower the barrier uh, of entry for our external partners. And we're doing this through leveraging um, off base locations um, for a lot of these interactions and events that we'll be holding in the future. Um, so for the Capital Tech Bridge, we're going to be using a space that currently exists in Alexandria, Virginia called the Garden. Um, that's where the Naval X headquarters is. Uh, they just finished a really large renovation. It's about 4,000 square feet. They have a large um, event space where we can hold Capital Tech Bridge events. Um, and there's also uh, a machine shop attached to it if we do have cooperative research projects um, that we want to uh, leverage that facility to, you know, tinker and do some prototyping activities. Okay. Thank you. So, so I know that the Navy, of course, is is kind of laser focused on warfighter needs, providing the right solution, and doing it as efficiently as effectively as possible. And it sounds like this tech bridge network of networks kind of approach um, is just another way to to collaborate and uh, deliver innovation. So most of the the uh, people that are associated with Deaf Tech, the businesses that we support and are taking technologies to market members are involved in product development, prototyping, uh, they're manufacturing, they are manufacturers, they do prototype type development, um, a wide variety of industries. Um, and I'm not even gonna start naming them because there's just too many. Um, so I, I would bet their first question to you is kind of what does this mean for business? How how does this designation make it easier for business to provide solutions, to collaborate on product development, or just get to see you and meet people? Um, I want to say in person, but you know we're we're going to have to wait for that. Sure, Kim, I can take that one. Um, so as Krista mentioned, we're also having a space outside the fence line here at Pax River and our airport innovation district. And really the tech bridge uh, is trying to lower the barriers for businesses, non-traditionals, folks that haven't um, normally done business with the DOD to access uh, OTA consortiums um, like a previous speaker talked about. Um, and then also the traditional T2 mechanism. So patent licenses, um, CRADAs, and it's really an opportunity, hopefully, to lower the barriers to accessing the lab and the scientists, engineers that are that are behind the fence line um, to solve warfighter problems, whether that's, again, through traditional T2 mechanisms or uh, through an OTA consortium to prototype. Um, it's really, as Chris has said, a connecting network. Mm -hmm. um, I did notice before you, before you go and I go on to the next question, um, mm -hmm. Do you want to share with everyone? I saw you put it in the uh, the chat window, but we have sure. a new consortium uh, in Southern Maryland mm -hmm. started last Absolutely. year. You want to talk just for a second about that? Sure. The the NASC, the Naval Naval Aviation Systems Consortium, uh, is designed for uh, prototyping and support to NAVAIR, the Naval Air Systems Command, um, and it has the full range of technologies within it um, to support naval aviation, uh, to include traditional stuff like uh, air systems, unmanned air systems, but also 
a lot of the business stuff. So uh, big data, machine learning, AI um, are all within the scope training uh, within the NASC. You can get more information. Like you said, I put a, um, a link in the chat. You can get more info on the Naval Aviation Systems Consortium. Um, we're releasing a statement of need probably at least once a month uh, to that consortium. And again, like you said, we're trying to attract non-traditional. So this is a different way, uh, you know, you're not getting into beta SAM or ESAM. Um, and, and hopefully the barriers to propose your good ideas to the Navy are lowered so it's easier. Uh, and that's, that's really the goal of uh, the consortium. It, it's been encouraging to see what's going on in Southern Maryland. I know that um, Leslie Taylor, the director of mm -hmm. NOC AD, mentioned several years ago that you know that she doesn't know what small businesses are out there, or not even small, but what businesses are innovating, um, and and how does she get to know them? So it's it's encouraging to see that while she had the question, um, now we are actually doing things to make that easier. That um, this has been elevated to a level of of importance. Um, and, and I was encouraged to see NASC and I'm very happy that we have tech bridges. And I know that's a very local Southern Maryland thing, but it's, it's exciting to see this. Um, yeah. And one, one point that, um, to, to your statement there, um, the other thing that we're really excited is the tech bridges are a national network. So as much as it's an engagement here in the local Southern Maryland region, if there are businesses that don't fit either Krista's Warfare Center up at Carter Rock or here at NOC AD, we can connect you with a, a rather large and growing tech bridge network that includes Newport, Rhode Island and undersea warfare, Keyport, Washington out in Seattle, also torpedoes and undersea warfare, a major fleet concentration center at San Diego for networking, and then also uh, down in Norfolk, Hampton Roads area. Um, and then there's one coming online potentially in Panama City, Florida. So uh, it's not, think of it too, is if you're looking for a way to um, introduce your technology to the to a warfare center or syscom or find relevant warfighters that can give you customer feedback and you do customer discovery, um, reach out to Krista and I will try to connect you up with the appropriate tech bridge. So think of it, not just it's connecting um, those regions to Southern Maryland too, hopefully. So if you're a business in Southern Maryland, um, you know, it's, it's bringing in uh, other requirements and as well bringing our, uh, our requirements out, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Um, that it's that, that network of networks. Oh, sorry, go no, ahead. I wanted to add one more piece and I saw a couple of questions pop up kind of related yeah. to it. Um, so examples of different events we'll be holding at the TechBridge off-base locations um, are like focused technology events about current funding opportunities that exist for industry and academia. Um, so, you know, the SBIR call, call comes out every six months. Um, there's OTA problem statements that government folks put on these OTA consortiums. Um, there's different O&R challenges that are out all the time. Um, so I'd like to get, you know, government, industry and academic folks in these focused technology areas, depending on whatever the topic is for SBIR or the OTA or a different funding challenge that's out um, into the garden or this off base location, um, you know, hosting tech talks from all of these folks um, and talking about these different funding opportunities that are available for folks to submit proposals to. Um, yeah. Thank you. So that that is very helpful uh, to know this. So right now, of course, we're talking about these in-person events. And of course, most of us have had to flex and we're um, thoroughly enjoying doing these online meetups. Actually, this has been a lot of fun. Um, when, when the three of us spoke last week, um, we talked about the, how hard it can be for businesses to keep up with everything that's going on. Um, we, you know, with this as a a kind of network of networks approach, as Rick mentioned, um, this doesn't just connect Southern Maryland to, um, you know, give business a way to connect to Southern Maryland. Um, it gives uh, businesses in Southern Maryland a connection to businesses at Carter Rock, outside the state, um, you know, across the across the entire Navy, but also to uh, their DOD partners as well. So there's collaboration. Uh, within DOD, uh, and, and when I say that, I'm talking about the, the Navy can collaborate 
it's an easy pathway for communication between the Navy and the Air Force, the Army, the Marines. Um, so can, so my original question was, how do businesses keep up and how is TechBridge going to uh, provide kind of, or will it provide a kind of one-stop shop for businesses to know what they need to know? Yeah, so like you said, Kim, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Rick and I and the other tech bridges are, you know, well connected in the government innovation space um, and trying to bring that to our local and regional ecosystem. Um, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, um, but we would like to connect a lot of these things going on. So, for example, Softworks, um, which is an innovation group for the Special Operations Command, um, last week's launched Tech Tuesdays, where um, industry folks with, you know, revolutionary technology can come pitch their technology to the Special Operations Command and all interested government partners virtually every Tuesday from, uh, I think it's three to five o'clock. You know, so, so things like that, um, we wanna make sure um, that folks in the MCR and folks in Southern Maryland see these opportunities um, because there are so many to engage with the Department of the Defense and the Department of the Navy. Um, so yeah, we, you know, I don't think we're a one-stop shop just because there's so much going on, but we would like to highlight, you know, and bring to light a lot of these um, opportunities that exist for industry and academia to participate in. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to move on to one more question that I have for the two of you. And then we have a couple of questions in the chat that I want to make sure that we get to. Um, so with DevTech, of course, you know, our DevTech clients need to have a deep understanding of their end users and customers. And we, we always push that. Um, they participate in accelerators. They, they uh, receive mentoring from us. There's um, collectively, uh, Gary Evans, who is the, uh, the director of TevTech, has done uh, mentoring through the i program. Um, we've done just a, a wide variety of support to our clients, helping them understand their customer. And when we spoke last week, I think Rick mentioned that it's been nearly impossible for businesses that are supplying warfighter solutions, you know, getting their products or services, their solutions to the end users to actually speak to them to find out what what life is like for them and what their challenges are. Um, can you talk a little bit about how tech bridges will help bridge that gap? Absolutely. So um, I completely agree. I've done the i program and, and one of the key things is talking to uh, your end customers and validating that uh, the product you're developing is relevant and addresses their, their, uh, their needs. Um, so one of the aspects of the tech bridge will be engagement and fleet exercises. So here at Pax River, we're doing uh, a naval fleet exercise where we're inviting so the Navy is going to be uh, paying for the ranges and infrastructure for this experiment and fleet exercise. And then we'll be inviting small businesses that have innovative solutions to demonstrate their technologies and get warfighter feedback um, right there on the spot. As well as one of the new tech bridges of the six that were stood up is down in Norfolk, Hampton Roads. And one of the major concentrations of that tech bridge is providing access to warfighters for small businesses to um, speak with them and, and get feedback on their innovation and products. So those are two ways uh, to, to be able to access relevant warfighters that can give you real-time feedback on, on your products. Thank you, I appreciate that. And I'll, I'll, uh, one other thing, Kim, there uh -huh. is a an event happening at one of the tech bridges in South Carolina, the Palmetto Tech Bridge, um, and I will post a link to that uh, experiment. And small businesses, if if their technology, really any any industry partner, can submit to participate if their technology fits within the scope of that um, experiment. So I will post more info of that in the chat. Okay, thank you, Rick. Um, so let me ask you a question since we just had this long discussion about uh, requirements, reporting requirements and things like that. Before a company participates um, with a, the, any kind of a tech bridge program, do they need to be registered in SAM? No, uh, no. So if you wanna come in and, and pitch or, or talk to Chris or I or any of the other 12 uh, 
tech bridges no absolutely not you can you can come in and talk to us and engage uh depending on what type of agreement um that that may be an outcome of that you will have to register um with sam but certainly not for the initial engagement that's that's fantastic i think that's really important and it makes it uh provides a level of comfort for businesses that are moving in here. Um, one thing I will say is that, you know, it's very challenging for those of us that have been in the, the DOD industry for so long to recognize that we're using acronyms um, or we're using terminology that people don't understand. Um, and so when we talk about exercises, it's literally just kind of a, a, a war game scenario. It's a practice for a uh, potential situation that uh, that the Department of Defense might come in. Um, they, they do them all the time and the purpose is to get better at what they do. And now it sounds like there's an opportunity for business to be there as well and, and participate. Um, so as Rick said, he's got some links in the, uh, the chat and he's gonna put some more in there. Um, one of the questions we have in the chat, and this is gonna be uh, quite a challenge uh, because the first part is easy, the second part is gonna be hard. Um, can, can either one of you provide us with maybe an example or two of how a small innovative company has used tech bridges? Has they, have they accessed it? But here's the challenge, do it without acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can, I can start, I got a, a good example. So. Um, we had a customer within the naval aviation community that was looking for a cargo unmanned air system. So think a drone that would deliver um, water and potentially other supplies not to exceed uh, roughly 25 pounds um, from one location to the other. So through our tech bridge and our partner uh, called Impacts, which I can post a link to, um, we did a prize challenge. So. Uh, we posted the criteria for the system, how much weight it had to carry, uh, and how we were going to grade how far it would go with that cargo, uh, and then did a fly-off out in Yuma, Arizona. Um, as, as part of that uh, prize competition, um, we did do an OTA with the two winning companies. Uh, at the culmination of that event. So one of the, the great things about the OTA authority is that you can use non-FAR-based forms of competition, whether that's uh, a prize challenge um, or other merit-based competition. So it allows you a lot more uh, creativity and flexibility about how you conduct the um, competition part of an OTA. Okay, thank you. Krista, do you have any um, quick examples you could share? Yeah, well, I also I also wanted to talk about, um, right, so through Accredo, we can do joint research and joint technology development, which, you know, we are super interested in working with small businesses um, to, to do joint technology development. Um, so we can leverage each other's subject matter experts, we can leverage each other's facilities. Um, that's a big part of it, too. So there's also a work with private party agreement. Um, where small businesses and external folks can have access to the Warfare Center unique um, facilities and personnel, you know, obviously for some sort of an appropriate fee. Um, but, you know, making um, small businesses and external partners aware of what kind of facilities exist at all the Warfare Centers is a big piece to this too. Um, so for example, you know, up at Carter Rock in Bethesda, Maryland, we have the David Taylor Model Basin, um, which is one of the largest ship model basins in the world. Um, and it's a test facility for the development um, of ship design. So, you know, just educating, um, educating our external partners on what facilities we have, and then also what facilities exist in the local ecosystem that um, we could potentially leverage through all these different agreements that exist, I think is really key to a lot of this. Thank you. Um, both of you failed with acronyms, but I was hyper focused on oh, it. No, um, it can't be helped. I mean, it's it's uh, much easier to say CRADA than Cooperative Research and Development Agreement, and it's a good uh, kind of reminder for everyone that this is why we have this event, just because um, there's a lot of terminology that can be uh, at first off-putting. But as I mentioned, in our state, 
there are tons of resources to help businesses figure all this out. And um, also, as I mentioned, the DOD has been very innovative about um, how they're working with businesses. So hopefully it should feel a little bit less intimidating. Um, we have a couple other questions. I'm going to throw them out there real quick. Uh, one question is about whether or not there's funding with tech bridges to engage in collaboration regionally. Um, do you have funding at, at the moment or is the funding just, uh, just to allow you to be, to get established? So in terms of funding, great question. Um, so since the tech bridge is helping to, uh, connect NAVAIR with small businesses and, um, non-traditional, we do have funding. And really that funding is in program offices to solve problems. So, um, which, which is a big deal. I think you'll see challenges where um, potentially there's no transition partner, meaning the DOD is putting out a challenge as market research, but once the challenge is complete, there isn't a program of record or a end customer that is gonna buy in quantity and go into production. So one of the things that we're, are focusing on is making sure that if we do have a prize challenge or a competition that the program office has identified transition funding so that if you're a small business and and take some risks and do investment um, on your own that the navy is committed if you successfully um, produce to try to transition the technology so we'll make that clear in the OTA announcements and in any of the um, the prize challenges that that we put out. So I'll say that there's not to your point, there's not specific funding for the tech bridge or for for me personally to go out and fund R&D efforts. But there's certainly a lot of funding available within the program offices to do um, innovative work. So over to you. Thank you for that. Um, I, this is so great uh, that the two of you could join us. I, I know it was the last minute, you know, I heard Secretary Gertz, I was there for the live announcement. Um, it was really exciting to be there and listen to everything that's going on. I was so happy to hear that we have both of you in Maryland and uh, you know that you're friends of Deaf Tech. So thank you for that. Um, I, I'm looking forward to this. I think the, one of the things I want to ask is, you know, maybe we're maybe we do some more of this. Maybe we uh, we bring you on again and we do a little more detail uh, because I know that uh, both of you have done OTAs, you've done CRADAs, you've done PLAs. It's your lifeblood. It's what you do. Um, trying to push the technology out to business to provide commercial use and also bring it back into uh, the Navy to to solve warfighter problems. Um, so maybe we maybe we look at doing another event uh, to talk more about all those opportunities. Um, we have this is probably our longest uh, meetup. Um, I thank everyone for staying on this long. Uh, I want to turn just for a second to the 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 purpose of Deaf Tech and why the Department of Commerce set this program up. Um, so our purpose, again, is to help businesses make use of these extraordinary resources, these lab resources that are available in our state. Uh, Maryland is home to 78 federal labs. That's more than any other state. It's twice as much as any other as the next largest number of labs in the state, actually. Um, and most of those state of state of the art facilities, the, the highly sought after expertise, the cutting edge intellectual property, that's all available to help businesses grow. Um, so from a business perspective, you're looking at, well, what's in it for me? What, what does this do for my business? If you marry that with solving an actual warfighter need, um, it's just a, a, an awesome win-win opportunity. Um, so I'm going to share a, a couple of slides um, in a second. I'll, I'll have a slide that has our, a link to our next event. Um, our, our next event, so what we do is help connect businesses to the labs. Um, with that, we want to make sure that people understand how to read a patent, not just how to read the patent, how to understand it, how to consider it for uh, potentially licensing. Uh, we're going to run through an example of some technology that's currently available for license from the Army Research Lab. Uh, we're going to be joined by the president and founder of RPM Tech, which stands for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing. Um, and, and he's going to walk us through a couple things to consider 
uh, when you look at a patent, how do you know uh, its manufacturing potential? How do you know how you're going to develop that into a prototype? Um, so Cyrus is going to walk us through some of that. We're going to talk to Griffin St. Louis as well. So Griffin is a program manager with DevTech, um, about, kind of about what do companies need to know uh, and what does he need to know about your company before he begins uh, that, that personalized IP matchmaking service that we do where we look for specific IP that can help solve one of your business problems. So mark your calendars, that's June 2nd. Um, as we go out, I want to say thank you everyone so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we are we're excited that you were able to be here. We hope that we were able to provide you with useful information. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, uh, and of course, all, as always, wash your hands, stay inside, social distance, all that good stuff. Um, and here are links to find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, our, our website. Uh, there's my email address, one of my email addresses, contact information for Ethan and the LinkedIn for uh, reaching Krista and Rick and also the uh, Naval X and Tech Bridges page. So thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Krista. And thank you, Rick. And we will see you all in a couple of weeks.